This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and excited to be with you guys today. And I tell you, it has been a really busy week. I don't know about you guys, but today being Wednesday, it has been busy so far this week. And you know what? It's better to be busy than it is to have nothing to do, right? I tell you, life is really fun and adventurous and exciting because sometimes we have those moments where, okay, you know what? We, you know, business has slowed down, or hey, my day's slowed down. I can watch TV read a good book, spend time with family, and then other times it's like you don't even have time to even take a breath. You know what I'm saying? But you know what the great thing about life is? Is knowing that we still have the power to choose. Happiness is a choice. No matter what we go through, no matter what comes our way, happiness can be our amazing tool. It can be our we could say weapon against depression. It can be our weapon against, you know, anxiety and, and worry and doubt and fear because happiness is a choice. And so today I want to be able to, first of all, before we start our little daily teaching today on our podcast, I want to leave that with you is I want to get it embedded deep inside of you to realize that no matter what happens, I can stop for a moment, look at my life and say, It doesn't matter because happiness is my decision to make whether I want it or I don't want it. It's not because somebody disappointed me, somebody uh, took away my joy. You know, there's there's a saying in Christianity, which is really, I think, uh, ridiculous, to be honest with you. And that is, you know, the devil stole my joy. The devil stole my joy. Now, I want everyone to think about that statement for a moment because the truth is no one can steal your joy. You have to voluntarily, willingly give up the joy. And the key thing is it's not even someone or the devil's taking your joy because they're not going to get, you know, they're not going to walk away and say, man, I stole that joy. Now I'm happy. You know, uh, that's not how life works. No one can steal your joy. If someone steals it from you, then they would take it and they would use it, right? And so that phrase is really ridiculous and very unscriptural and, and honestly just shows a lot of lack of knowledge on the part of whoever created that statement. It sounds fun, but it's not right. You know, and so when you look at that, no one can steal or take from you your joy or any type of emotion. Your emotion comes from you. No matter what comes your way, no matter what somebody does to you, says to you, happiness is your decision, right? No one took it. No one can alter it except by you giving it no place. And you can cause happiness to have no place if you want to. But I choose to have happiness be my top priority today, no matter what I go through. How about you? So with that said, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about building relationships. And I want to be able to talk to you about a little bit of of how and why relationships sometimes tend to not be our greatest uh, tool, right? Some people I've spoken with in life coaching sessions have told me, you know, I don't really understand. No one likes me. I have no friends. You know, my family members don't like me. Like, no one likes me. And then we'd love to use use this dynamic excuse that says, because I'm a Christian. No one likes me because I'm a Christian. No, that, my friend, is also unbiblical, right? Because the Bible says a good name is to be chosen among rich So God wants you to have a good name. If you have a good name, that means people would like you, right? No one's ever said, I can't stand him with a passion, but he's got a good name. That would be that would be an oxymoron, right? Because that's not what people say. What people say is, I don't like them because. And I want us to focus today on relationships. It's something really that might step on all of our toes, but it's important for us to be able to take notice in. And, And that is that... If we look at our lives and, and, and think about the fact, how many of you 
that I've actually life coached before, which I know I've life coached thousands throughout the years, but how many of you have actually said that statement to me or maybe to yourself or maybe someone else? And that is, I don't like Sarah. I don't like Mary. She's mean. I don't like Tom because he's cruel. I don't like, you know, um, Susan because she puts me down. Notice how you always tend to give a definition of why you don't like someone, right? But isn't it interesting that when it comes to us, it's uh, it's always like totally rephrased and it's totally opposite, which is what? No one likes me. No one likes me because I'm a Christian. Can you imagine someone? Now, here, here's what's interesting to me about this is when we look at the Bible and we say, you know, that you'll be persecuted for the sake of the gospel. I want you to think about that for a moment. You will be persecuted for the sake of the gospel. The gospel is dealing with and I put it to to you in a term where Christian and non-Christian can understand that because once again, when I say you know the word religion, I don't want people to get confused and say Germany thinks Christianity is a religion. Well, it is one of the religions in the world. I mean, hello, you know, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, Hindu—they're they're all religions. But yet we look at at Christianity as saying, well, besides it being a religion, it's it's more or less a relationship. Because that's the initiation that God wanted to do is initiate all of us into relationship to where it doesn't hold power of a religion in our lives. But with that said, we have to think of the fact of that it is a world, it is considered one of the world's religions, right? That's just a known fact. So when we look at Christianity and we say that you'll be persecuted for the sake of the gospel, you'll be persecuted for my name's sake. What that's saying is that I still want you to have a good name. You're still going to be, you know, I still desire that you, you know, press towards the mark of the high call to have a good name. Because that's going to be your greatest thing among all your money and, and, and everything that you own and everything that you have. So a good name is something that God desires for us to have. So when we are persecuted for the sake of the gospel, all that is saying is this. is Let's say, for example, if I was Hindu and, and I really had this fervor belief in all my gods and believe that it is it is the right way only way and I'm dogmatic now hear what I'm hear me what I'm saying this to you and I'm dogmatic about it or let's say for example I'm a Buddhist and I'm really just gung ho for like a bit of words on this is it this is the right way you know this is the only way and so what happens is we take that sort of dogmatic closed minded um uh, energy, for lack of better words, and when we project it to someone who, let's say, is on fire for the Lord, loving Jesus, wants to, you know, um, uh, you know, have Christ live in them, you know, they're they're decreased, that God increased in them, they're doing things that normally other people would not do, then that's when we would say that that other person, that maybe, let's say, was even hurt by Christianity wounded by some by a Christian or maybe they're fervor about their religion and they come against us because of the fact that we love Jesus or that we choose to obey the principles of the scriptures then 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 when somebody comes against us then they're persecuting us for the sake of what we believe of the things of God's kingdom that's what it means plain and simple so when we look at the power of a good name. And we look at relationships. We can't sit here and say, oh, you know what? No one likes me because I'm a Christian. No one likes me. And now, now, now let me just say this to you guys. I've heard a lot of you guys say this as well. You talk a lot of spiritual language, a lot of Christianese language. And that is things such as, you know, um, no one likes me because I'm a Christian, because I'm blood blot, bought, spirit field. You know, I speak in tongues. You know, I, uh, you know, woohoo. You know, I'm very spiritual and I talk about the, you know, this and this and this. Well, here's the key thing. People don't like you because of that. They might think you're a little fruit loop because they don't understand your language, okay? Let's face reality. There's a difference in being persecuted for the sake of Christ, right? Then there is a difference between a lot of people who have this spiritual deep language that no one on outside of Christianity or outside of the charismatic move, for lack of better words, you know, can understand what they're saying because it's not normal language that every plain Jane person on this planet would talk. 
And it's interesting because even within spirituality, when Christians look at New Age people and they say, oh, what is all this enlightenment and alignment and transcending? Oh, that's all bad, right? Isn't it interesting that we do the same exact thing to people we don't understand? Hello? And yet we write them off as being wrong. Why? Because they're a little fruit loop. You know, they're, here they are and, you know, maybe, maybe they believe, you know, and I was reincarnated from a dog in my past life. I, you know, I was, you know, I was a former princess in Egypt or whatever the case may be. And so we write them off because we say, oh, they're crazy. Look at their language. Oh my gosh. Like what a fruit loop, right? That's what, that's what certain Christians have done. But yet we talk our crazy language as well. Yes, I said crazy, crazy, spiritual, spooky, tr- you know, language, uh, you know, that, that really some of these words are not really biblical. I love the word enlightenment. It's not completely in the English language of the Bible. No. And, you know, alignment is not really in the Bible. Right? Come on. Uh, you know, uh, the word protocol is not a, a, a word that is actually in the Bible in the English, you know, language of, of the King James Version, you know, or, uh, you know, uh, awakening is not. But yet, what these words mean is a lot of them allude towards the actual Aramaic language. And we can, I can prove a lot of these words, even some words in spirituality, folks or actually in more of the Aramaic language. We're talking about, first and foremost, a religion from the Eastern world. Christianity is a religion in the Eastern world. Hello, right? Not in the Western Americanized version of our Bible. And so because of that, we do the same thing to people that they do to us. And so with that said, our job, as those of us who are Christians, should be able to move past our language and get to the real, the raw of everyday talking to where people can understand what's being said. Now, with that said, let's go back to relationships. So are we really truly being hated by all people? I have no friends. My family turned their back on me because of Jesus. No, not because of Jesus, because you talk a talk that they don't understand. And for them, they can't get it. It doesn't make them, and let me just, let me just say something to each one of you that I know this, that many of you, this will step on your toes. It doesn't mean they're not Christians. And it doesn't mean they're not spiritual. It just means that you have, you have created your own culture within a small sect within Christianity of a language that you hear and you, and that you understand, that you speak. You can't expect everyone else to speak that or understand that. You know, and, and because of it, it doesn't make them un- unholy, you know, non-religious, uh, you know, spiritual. It just means that you, not them, you have chosen to get into a vibration, a vein, a frequency, whatever you want to choose, whatever you want to call it. Here's some good terms for you guys, right? It's not really biblical either. You know, but, um, but there, but, but we know science, science has just proven that, that everything is vibration and frequency. So, but you choose to get into that world of speaking that language, right? So we have to know that, you know, when the shoe's on the other foot, people have the right to say that about us. And you can't, and I, and I, I don't blame them because we say that about them. And so in order for us to be truly Christ-like, we have, Christ-like, we have to begin to transcend out of that narrow-minded mentality, get into a place where we're, we can be all things to all people that we might win some, meaning being all things, meaning that we can talk the talk, we can talk the language of everyone on this planet, Right? And not assume just because they're Christian, they're going to understand our small little sect of Christianity and this prophetic world that speaks this little language. And, and yet, if they don't speak it, they're non-Christian. No. That is wrong. It's judgmental. And it's not right. It's harsh. And so we have to begin to say, you know what? I need to get out of that language. I need to get... Now, can we use that language? Yes. I use it all the time. All the time with you guys. I use it all the time, in, you know, when I'm at church. But however, when I'm around my friends and my family, I don't, I don't. And you know why? It doesn't mean I'm not real. It means I have learned to master the art of language. I'm learning to master the art of wisdom. And with, and if wisdom cries out, it says, what exactly is it 
that I need to speak and how I need to speak in front of these people. And so I do have a different language for everyone, everyone I come in contact with because that is a God trait. That is a Christian biblical trait because I want to be all things to everyone because I don't want to sit here and say I'm writing off 90% of the world because I've got caught up in a language that is maybe a 5% or 10% you know, uh, within even not the world, but in within Christianity, they speak, and I don't want to be that person. And so that way, I could truly never say I'm going to be disliked because I'm or being persecuted because I'm a Christian. No, I want to be able to be all things to all people. I want to be able to laugh, cut up, tell jokes, that have humor because the laughter doeth good like a medication. And guess what? We all need that. And so building up relationships has to start with number one, not finding yourself using that crazy definition of I'm just hated by everyone because I'm a Christian. No, you're not. Okay? And because of that, we have to begin to dissect and say, dissect this, you know, language, but dissect yourself to say, okay, is it something that I've ever said before to them? How truly am I acting in front of someone? Do I act better than them? Do I perceive myself to be automatically subconsciously that I'm automatically separate from you because you're not, your, your beliefs are different from mine? You know, here's the key thing. I'm around a lot of people that can detect, you know what, uh, uh, people that can detect things in me that says, you're just, you're just different. I like that. You're, there's something about you that's different. That's the language of the silent witness. That's the language of the silent witness. Because my, my conversation and everything else will allude towards healthy, good reports, praiseworthy, funny, laughing conversations with them. Not, I'm a born again powerful Christian and you better be as well. If not, we can't relate. Well, you know what? I wouldn't relate to you if you came with me that language either and I'm a prophet. I mean, I, I would say, oh gosh, you are too much for me. I, I don't need that. I need a, I need a friend. I need a person in a human body that can laugh, cut up, watch good movies, love Jesus more than life itself, be involved in things, you know, uh, of, of the kingdom, but also have a good life, love to travel, you know, uh, love to watch funny documentaries and funny movies, uh, doesn't mind going to different restaurants, having fun, maybe loves to listen to crazy music, or maybe sometimes loves to dance or whatever. That's what I would want in my life, right? Because that is shows the full totality of the kingdom, because you can display joy in every area of your life, meaning that that joy can truly uh, come into you and and come out like a river th uh, th to where you can truly say, I am all things. So my joy can be all things to everyone I come in contact with. That, my friend, is a son of God. That's the mature part of who we really are deep inside of us. And so when we deal with relationships, we have to begin to, number one, throw out that ridiculous term. Number two, look at our lives, examine our lives, and just say, have I been a really good friend to them? Have I taken interest in the things that they like? Well, you know what? I'm a Christian. I don't watch movies. And I've heard several people say this to me. And that's fine if you don't, okay? No judgment passed on you. Trust me. But yet we can get to a point where we become so legalistic that if we, that if we feel that if one thing can affect us, that you feel your, your relationship with Christ is so fragile, you would fall apart. That's a really bad thing. That's a bad witness. And that's really, I would say you need to self-examine your relationship. You know why? Because, you know, in a marriage, you know, they, you have friends outside of a marriage. You have relationships at church. You know, you you do all these things, and so and so. But you don't find yourself saying, "If I'm friends with Sarah, my husband will leave me." If I'm friends with you know with Bob, you know, then uh, or, or Linda over here, then oh my goodness, you know, my relationship's corrupt. Well, no, you can't have relationships where you go eat, drink coffee with your friends, or you know, laugh in a Bible study, or get together with your girlfriends and take a, a you know trip to the beach sometime. You know, or your guy friends. I mean, go to the mountains. I mean, so your your relationship shouldn't be that fragile. If it is, I would say see a marriage counselor. Amen. But when we deal with relationships, we're dealing with the fact of how we take an interest in what they like. Like, or have we shoved so much down their throat of the things we don't do? I don't watch movies. I don't listen to any type of music except worship. I only do this. I don't do that. I don't drink coffee. I don't believe in drinking too much caffeine. And trust me, I've heard people say that to me before. 
but no judgment. Amen. You know, um, I, you know, because it's religious feel for them. You know, I don't do, and, and, and once again, no judgment, no condemnation. But the idea here is your relationship with Christ should not be that fragile. If it's, if it's, if it's strong, grounded and foundationally, you know, uh, like fixed upon the rock of Christ, then you know what? You're not going to fall apart, folks. Right? You're not going to. It's like being in a meeting. You know, I, there's times I've been in church meetings when I when I used to travel so much speaking, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I, someone would say, "Oh, the atmosphere's got to be absolutely perfect for the Holy Spirit to flow and move." And I'm like, "Is is, is the Holy Spirit glass? Is he that fragile that he will break?" Is he that fragile that if if one person coughed or one person got up to go to the bathroom that he would just up and leave? You know, I mean, it, you know, who who are we dealing with here? You know, are we dealing with a God of the universe who made who made loud sounds and shouts from Jericho and quietness and stillness all at the same time? Or are we dealing with someone who actually is so fragile that at the drop of a pen they will cry, leave, or break? Right. So we have to understand that. Things have to have a perfect, a great, not perfect, a great, not perfect atmosphere. However, that spoken doesn't mean that we have to begin to have everything so perfect that, that, that everything of God's kingdom, you know, if it's not literally perfect, would just break and, and, and be destroyed right then, right? That's not the kingdom of God. And relationships should be shouldn't be that way either, you know. It, oh, if, you, if I listen to this and you listen to this, oh, we can't be friends. If your relationship is that shallow, that hollow, and that sort of uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? That um, well, we'll just use the word fragile for lack of better words. That fragile, I would say you need to reexamine, you know, how, who you are as a friend to people. Because relationships are built on laughter, fun, memories, experiences together. You know, and that's how relationships are built. Because relationships do not require me telling you. If I ha- if I have to start off by telling you everything that I practice, everything that I believe, everything that I do, if I have to do that, then I'm not giving you a fair share, a, you know, a fair shot at a relationship. I'm not truly interested in your friendship, to be honest with you. If I did that, I am pretty much more convincing you. We could sit, put it another way, really trying to convince myself, right? Uh, for you, and have you validate what I am, what I feel I am. But the truth is, that's not really what relationships are built on. Relationships are built on, hey, how are you? Great, wonderful. You know, uh, hey, do you like this TV show? My gosh, I do too. This is my favorite actor. Wow, mine too. And then from there, what other movies they play in? Oh man, they play in this movie too. I love that movie. That's awesome. Hey, do you like to go, do you like the beach? Oh my gosh, I love the beach. You know, we should go to the beach sometime. Yes, we should do that. Hey, you like Italian food? Yes, I love Italian food. We should do that sometime. Those are relationships. Relationships should not be built on me telling you every little jot and tittle about my life and then basically making sure that you match up to everything that I am. That's called pride, folks, right? That's actually called a wall of protecting yourself to where no one will, no one can come into your world because you do not want your world shaken. You do not want your world, world uh, as they say in the drink world, stirred. You don't want your, you know, your relationship, uh, you know, um, touched at all why not because you're firmly firmly grounded on christ because you really are not sure what you believe and that's a key thing people don't realize it's actually more or less a a wall of protection because you're not sure about you yourself and therefore you don't want anything shaken or moved because at the moment something's touched or shaken or moved you're going to fall to pieces and start you know oh my gosh the devil oh my gosh god where are you you're no longer you're no longer around me god where are you have i sinned have i done something wrong and you fall to you fall to pieces that's not christianity folks a firm foundation says it's okay come into my world it's okay I know who I am in Christ, but I'm also so extremely open-minded and open to other experiences that God might have for me to either a challenge me on to maybe maybe even reinforce my my former belief or even maybe change my belief. Now, this is one we don't see in Christianity a whole lot. Changing my belief. If I'm around you long enough, maybe my belief will change. Ooh, that sounds really bad to a lot of people. The truth is, that's a praise God 
Holy Ghost moment for you because that's what I would want because I want, I want to be able to evolve. I want to be able to grow. I don't want to be able to, to find myself just never evolving, never moving, never growing. And my belief stays the exact same all my life. No, I want it to evolve, expand, multiply. I want all that fun stuff. That's what I want because that's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is built on expansion and it's okay to be challenged on your beliefs because you might feel that maybe your beliefs are awesome, but yet some of your beliefs might need to be challenged. Some of your beliefs might need to be a little tweaked a little bit. Bit. And I don't know about you, but I'm so open to that because I'm all about expandedness and growth and multiplication and challenging and learning and de-learning and deprogramming. You know, um, I'm all about that because that's what makes me who I am today. So I want to be able to throw this at you today with these relationships because I'm a firm believer that this, my friend, is a powerful, powerful thing when it deals with the kingdom of God and relationships. So look at yourself. One of the main things I like to tell people is this. You're going to have to learn to come out of yourself when it deals with relationships. And what that looks like is this. Coming out of yourself basically says this. It says, I'm going to come out of myself to see exactly how I'm treating you and what I'm saying to you. If I'm saying something to you out of myself and not examining it, then I'm going to be deceiving myself. If I take a step out of myself to say and self-examine myself and say, you know what, that sounded a little prideful. I never thought about that, but hearing me say that sounded a little prideful. Hearing me say that sounded me, made me sound a little closed-minded. Hearing me say that, you know, remind me of someone that I once didn't like saying something like that to me. See, see, examining yourself and what I what I call just sort of stepping out of yourself and looking at yourself and examining your, 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 your conversations is one of the most healthiest things you can ever do. It keeps you from being deceived folks, right? And so this is sort of a teaching I want to bring out today in this podcast. I'm actually writing a book on how to build healthy relationships. It'll be out a couple of months, but I highly encourage every one of you to make sure you are on my book of the month program. It's actually called Hot Off the Press Monthly Book Club. And you can find it by going to identitynetwork.net and just click on it. It'll automatically deduct $15 out of your account every month. Shipping the USA for those in the USA only is free. You get the free ebook as well, uh, emailed to you every month. Uh, you get the book shipped to you, and the book is retailing for like sixteen ninety nine. And yet, you will always only pay fifteen dollars. And so, that's why I'm really encouraging each one of you to make sure you're on the program because all my books will revolve around yes, number one, health. Making money, number one, knowing who you are in Christ. You know, and all these things I call number one, knowing the grace. Talking about miracles, dealing with business, becoming an entrepreneur, examining yourself, right? I mean, all the, you know, laws of God's kingdom, uh, energy, vibration. I mean, I tackle every one of these things. Why? Because I want you to be well-rounded. I don't want you to read a book every month on just sort of, you know, uh, God's power, God's power, God's power. I want you to know what that power does. The experience of God's power. How, what, what, what does that power do within our marriage, our lives, our relationships, our business? You know, because I want to be able to make you be so well-rounded where you can say, you know what, I read a book on this once by Jeremy Lopez. Oh, over here on this other subject, extreme subject, I read a book by Jeremy Lopez on that subject too. That's the idea I want you to have today. Because I want to see you be able to truly be all things to all people that you might win some. So thank you for tuning into this podcast again today. And once again, I love to say this because it's one of my favorite quotes ever. And that is, I close with this. If you don't like your day-to-day, remember happiness is a choice. If you don't like your day-to-day, guess what? Change your thoughts, you'll change your life. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.